RugbyRenegade.com, the number one online strength and conditioning program for rugby. Are you ready to get bigger, stronger, fitter, and faster and dominate your opposition? Welcome to the Rugby Renegade Podcast, where we build machines. Hello and welcome to the Rugby Renegade podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Pro Athlete Supplementation. Check them out at pas-nutrition.co.uk for all your supplementation needs. And don't forget that subscribers to the Rugby Renegade program get a 40% discount on retail prices. Yes, welcome to episode 44 of the Rugby Renegade podcast. My name is Jamie Bain and today I interview Phil Greening, assistant coach to USA Sevens and director at the Athlete Factory Chester. Uh, slightly different tack, we normally interview SNC coaches, sports scientists we've had the odd physio uh, one nutritionist and one player but this time we thought it'd be good to get the insights of an actual rugby coach um, there's a lot of stuff we're hearing is that um, it's so important for strength and conditioning coaches to build that relationship with the coach um, have that you know mutual understanding and kind of be on the same page so um, hopefully this will help with that so give it a listen and let us know what you think Hi Phil, welcome to the Rugby Renegade podcast, great to have you on. Uh, now we normally start by the guests just telling us a bit about their background, uh, like who they've worked with. I, I'm sure most people kind of, you know, remember your playing career, but let, maybe spend a bit more time in your coaching career. Yeah, well, I, I was fortunate to be at Wasps uh, in the Golden Air, so I played at Gloucester and Wasps um, and a bit of time at Sale and England British Lions, but then my coaching career went into the England Sevens, uh, Scotland, uh, London Welsh, London Scottish, so I've, I've been been around uh, a few teams in internationally and, and club and doing some consultancy um, pretty much globally now so yeah the, co- the coaching's definitely grown and was an extension really of my playing career yeah and and obviously now working with USA Sevens what, what's your role there and, and what's, what's happening at the minute I guess yeah it's been like five years now so I sort of started off um, assistant coach and then sort of went uh, into um the high performance role for the 15s and the 7s. Um, and then I worked alongside John Mitchell for the 15s uh, as a sort of performance manager and defence coach. So that was my uh, role for two years with him. And, um, and then due to the travel and everything else in the business starting, it's really with Mike Friday um, and just assistant coach there. So it, it's been a... It's been a bit of a journey, obviously, in a program to being back to coaching, to move more hands on, to be in office, to you know, so the, the roller coaster of the performance manager. But now it, it's more um, the nuts and bolts back on the pitch again, which is which is nice. Yeah, and of course you're currently in Paris. We can probably hear a, a Parisian policeman siren there, <laughs> as ever. <laughs> but yeah, obviously enjoying life over there. But I, th- I thought it'd be really good, as I said, you know, previously off air, it'd be it'd be great to get a kind of coach's insight into S and C and. And kind of what they want from a from a, an S and C coach because you know a lot of the S C coaches we get on you know very experienced people and they say you know where where young S and C coaches need to progress is to kind of learn learn to communicate better and build that relationship with a coach. So um, hope, hopefully we'll get that from this. So uh, as a coach, what do you look for from your S and C staff? Uh, I, I think the you know, the qualifications is key, but I think it's the experience, you know, where they've worked, who they've mentored with is always big with me. Like I, I, I spent my, a lot of my playing career with Craig White. And then when I went into my coaching, I, I actually went into um, S&C and nutrition as well through Craig and, and Matt Lavelle. So the people I've been mentored with has really shaped my career. Um, so the S&C side of it has been a big, a big influence on me. So for me, when I look at the S&C boys coming in, it's always who, who they've worked with, who they've mentored, been mentored by, you know, what what um, what influences, what habits, what what uh, have they picked up from from these people they've worked with, and that's really key. Cause it's not always the time that people spent. So, you know, for me, they don't have to be, you know, five years, you know, at a club or in a premiership or whatever it is. It's more like what knowledge are they picking up, and then from there, from, from that is, you know, how are they continue to learn? C- CPDs for me is massive. You know, not only with what we do with the with the USA stuff, you know, um, for our coaches, but also the players, and also with the athlete factory back home. Every coach I have um, in the training facility, they have to deliver two two CBD projects they want to do a year, and I'll try and make it work to to get them there. So I think that continual learning because it it does evolve, and I think the influences you pick up is key for me rather than um, anything else. Yeah. Oh, it's good good to hear you've got that S and C sort of background as well because 
like I guess the big issue is that coaches don't normally have that, so it's it's difficult communicating, you know, what both people are trying to achieve. Oh, um, def- definitely, and, and half the time is if you don't if you don't have an insight to it, um, or the coach isn't open to it, and don't trust that S and C guy. It, it's so tough, so tough. I mean, I've had, you know, I, I work uh, with Alex Ross, who's the, the performance head of performance here for the Argentinian team, and you know, we we worked closely together. And then when he went to Argentina, you know, it, it took him a long, long time to educate the coach on what. You know how to develop, how, how to move on, how to put these practices in, how to plan their weeks, how to do the training, and it was just something new. And you know, it does take time. And I think that communication skills and that knowledge and, and having a coach that's, that's open to it and understand that SNC really is the forefront of it, and that's that's key. Yeah, definitely. So, um, in moving, I guess looking more at kind of sports science stuff, how how do you use data to inform your coaching? So all that. All that sports science and SNC information. How do you use that to actually impact what you're trying to achieve on the rugby field? Yeah, well, we we obviously do. You know, use GPS and we use it a lot. Um, we use it everything we do. Everything we shaped is all around um, playing above the game. So training is. You know, we, we work off metrics of you know 30 percent higher speed um, than, than the game. You know, because then the game's easy. You know, we we don't look at volume as much, uh, only for workload. Um, but the actual high speed is our key one, and, and you know, X cells, D cells is massive. So we 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 look at that um, hell of a lot, and we plan everything around that. And then the volume will will guide us on what we can do and what we can't do. But we're always trying to get those use those metrics to to plan our week and and get the boys prepared to play above the game because then the actual game becomes easy, and everything's built around that. Everything's built around our our GPS metrics. They're huge for us, and then. In the gym, we're using you know, obviously tendos and um, push bands and everything else to give us that data, just to keep the boys you know um, firing and progressing there throughout the, throughout the year. And that's that's key. That that data is key. But the GPS has has changed a hell of a lot um, the way we now train um, because sometimes it isn't the accuracy you want. Sometimes it's not the rugby you want. We just want the boys to move and be able to move and, and make good decisions. Um, at a higher pace in the game, you know, because the accuracy will come. So our weeks are very planned and detailed on a progression of that, really. So it's more, you know, get, get the boys moving at a high pace and then the accuracy later on in the week will come. But we're trying to play above above uh, above the pace of the game. Yeah. Um, and I guess looking, you, you've got loads of experience, 15s and 7s. Like how, how does your planning and preparation differ between 15s and 7s? Obviously, you know, where you've got camps away and, you know, breaks in the season and things. Yeah, it's, it's um, funny enough, our, 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 our weekly plan and our training programmes are all similar to 15s. It's some I learned from um, a bit of time, obviously, you know, with, with, with John Mitchell and the Hurricanes as well, like his link to them. I spent a bit of time with them planning and building what we did with the USA team and that's now filtered into, we use the same of the sevens, you know, so when Alex Ross was here, we built um, a lot with the influence of, of Nick Gill um, and the guys of the Hurricanes and, you know, that 15s model has come into the sevens and that's actually transformed the way we train and um, our injuries have, have gone down because of the, the way we plan our weeks. So 15s and sevens are so closely entwined I, I think it's it's just the um the levels of, of high speed the percentage of high speed or the the, the meters per minute that, that you want is just different that's all i mean we we you know high speed per session we're, we're at 30 35 percent where 15s are probably happier when they get to 15 or 18 percent so that's just the difference but the whole week and planning and and everything else is is very 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 similar yeah that's cool now i often look at, at sevens and, and think um, like recovery is a big issue for them, obviously with with travel and and uh, you know multiple games over a weekend. What what have you learned through working with sevens? Like what what are the kind of go tos for recovery? Um, it's it's the usual because you know especially the tournaments, um, it's what the tournament provides. So you know the ice baths, the bikes, the bands, the road, you know the foam rollers, all that. It, it's the usual stuff, and um, you know so we've been lucky a couple of times in the states. We've used cryotherapy. When the guys come to the athlete factory before they went to London, we use cryotherapy. So, you know, outside of the usual techniques, there aren't much, but we're, we're huge on sleep. Nutrition is a massive, massive part of it. Um, we, we've emphasised a lot of that more uh, now, the sleep and nutrition, and we're planning their days of when to eat, when to nap, what to eat. You know, our weeks as well, uh, we're, we're very aware that 
it's not the day after it's it's, it's going to be the, the second day you know so it's that that's a crucial day for us or and what we do that day um but a lot of it is just building robust athletes as well you know it's, it's got it's building an athlete that can 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 cope with this and go again and again and that's that's been the impressive bit with the sevens how it's grown and the physicality of the game now you know these guys are uh, tremendous athletes and the size of them and the pace of them and you know the injuries are getting less and less which is just amazing but it just shows that snc is such an important part of it that if you build robust athletes then they can they can deal with pretty much anything but it's 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 that snc approach um which is key yeah, I think you're right. If you if you build athletes who can tolerate that stress, uh, you you often see your, your fittest fittest players are the ones who recover better, you know, because they've yeah. built that tolerance it's, and you know they've got a better aerobic capacity to help recover afterwards as well. Exactly, and the body adapts, and I think that's that's the key to it. And you know, we we've definitely learned, um, you know, from especially from the New Zealand lot, where you know you build into the weekends, you don't taper down because the body then is adjusted. And you know, I, you know, I find. You know, doing some CPDs in in NRL, you know, they're they're having proper physical bash ups on team run days, mm. you know, and that was unheard of in in Europe. And it's like, hang on, no, we try and we try and let the boys have enough time off so they relax. But actually, that doesn't that doesn't go well. You know, it's more the day you know, give give them that more time off after the, the weekend, but you know, build them into the weekend and it makes a robust athlete. That that was an interesting um, philosophy to use, and you know, the New Zealanders do do a fair bit of that, and we've adapted that, and we found that. Actually, yeah, our, our match day injuries have, have gone down, and our training injuries have gone down, which is um, which is amazing. It just shows that you know, as I, like you say, you know, you build a robust athlete, you can deal with it, and they have a, a, a capacity and a tolerance to, to put that workload through, then you'll be fine. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, so over over your career, so playing and coaching, you obviously yeah. I don't want to put a number on that's a few years, but oh. um, how have you yeah. seen the S and C change over those years? Uh, massively. I mean, the importance of it has just got more and more. You know, I, I was lucky, um, you know, when I was at Gloucester, Richard Hill brought in a guy in called Paul Bolson, who was from Bobsleigh. And he was a little bit ahead of his time and he brought in the, you know, a lot of power, power fitness and, and power movements, you know, and he was big on that. But I think he was before his time. And then when I moved to Ross, you know, Warren Gatlin bringing Craig White in was just transformed everything. And the only reason we won the four premierships on the trot when in the Gatlin years and the European Cups was simply because we were the first fittest team and, and that was that was it. We were always going to outwork everyone and always going to be fitter and stronger and more powerful than anyone. And that was all around Craig and, you know, Paul Stridgen was there, Mark, Mark Bickham, who's now head of performance at, at Wigan, you know, um, you know, Ryan, who's head of performance at Bath. All these guys who worked under Craig have now gone off to very successful careers, um, all from that time at Wasp. And I think that was the biggest learning curve for me. Um, and I think that built the foundation of what I'm doing now and my philosophy about everything is is built around having you know, the fittest team and um, SNC has just grown it's got more in depth you know the technology now is phenomenal sometimes it's it's too much you know you know, we, we ignore a lot of data because it's irrelevant in, in a way and we can't really um, we can't do you know we can't do anything with it it's nice to have but actually does it improve anything or does it make us think differently you know half it doesn't so you know, the, the technology and how SNC has grown has just gone through the roof, really. And I think it's it's great for the game. I think I think the the wellness is, is good. You know, I think that's now you know looking after players a lot more. That's all technology is fantastic. You know, and in my and when I was playing, there, there was hardly anything around that. So um, yeah, it's just it's, it's it, I think the development of it has been fantastic. And I think it's just got, only going to help more and more the the. You know the game itself, but also the players' careers. I think as well. Yeah, definitely. I think I think you're right. It's um, I think maybe a few years back, where everyone was still in the same position where they were collecting a lot of data, still didn't really quite know how to use it. Whereas now, mm. more and more people, you know, at different clubs and international teams have kind of figured out ways that work for them. And yeah, and the more that that sort of information gets shared, the the more it'll be improved as well. So it's uh, yeah, exactly exciting. Yeah. So um. Who were? I mean, we're talking about building fit, robust athletes. Who are some of the fittest or hardest training players you've you've played with or coached? Um, God, wow, well, there's, there's been a lot. I mean, people like Neil Back, you know, my my guy. I, I when I had to change my shape and my fitness and realise that to get fit, and I couldn't be this fat blob who played at Gloucester, who just carried off the rope for 
for 10 metres and had a breather for 30 minutes. Um, Neil Buck was a big influence on me and, and Mike Cat as well. So I, I stuck myself to them and, and they sort of dragged me along. So they, they were fantastic trainers. And then, you know, obviously Johnny Wilson's just, you know, different level. But, it, you know, through, through the years, it's just been, um, you know, the boys at Wasps. So the, ha- the habit's been been interesting. You know, your Josh Lewis's, your Joe Worsley's, everyone who's really gone on to, or had such an amazing career was all built around work ethic. And, you know, we were all built around work ethic. So really, a lot of the boys at Wasps, you know, were, were there. Um, with that and I think some of the guys now I'm working with with the USA team you know Ben Pinkelman you know Carlin Isles is a ridiculous athlete and you know him and um, Perry Baker you know they're, they're known for their speed and orbits their work ethic and their strength and everything they do they're some of the most committed and um, you know hard working athletes that I've, I've come across and half the time we've got to rein them in um, so you know it goes from the boys back when I played with England and was to, to the guys now they've just been and then they've got bigger and faster as well, which is uh, which is quite scary. I'm quite glad I don't play anymore, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned Carl and I was obviously uh, there was a question about him, you know, just to you know ask about him and what has it, have you you seen anything he's done that's kind of you thought oh that's good that's something we can use or you know from his his um, sprinting background or yeah I think I think some of his like and his knowledge of. of biomechanics and sprinting I mean he's got no qualification or anything like that just when you hear him talk about it it's like wow you know and, and some of the you know he talks about angles and foot plan and all this it's really really interesting and, and, and some of the things I've you know, it just it, like, into tackling drills you know things like that you know just thinking about footwork and biomechanics and, and del- pushing you know power in your, through the floor and all this sort of stuff he, he, he has some great great things you know and um, he, he's He's a very knowledgeable kid who who just loves sprinting, loves being fast, and and he he's a sponge. And sometimes he does too much, no, too much, you know. And uh, it does make me giggle because obviously I commute from from the UK, and so I track everything um, they do, and I see stuff he does on Instagram. And, he, and he'll go anywhere to go to anyone says to him, you know, you do this and you'll be better. He'll go, and you find him in some random gym in the states doing, I don't know, like putting a Swiss ball on a leg press machine and doing one legged. I'll do some mad stuff. You think, what are you doing, mate? You know, and it's like but he, he's just he's just one of these people who just wants to wants to anything. Just give me anything. If it's gonna make me better, I'm I'm in. And that's um you know, sometimes it's a hindrance, but his work ethic and his 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 mindset for that is you gotta admire it really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh now talking about again back of your playing career, uh what's one of the hardest training sessions you've ever done? Oh, uh, it mate, it was always um it was always a white. We had a thing called the runways, and they were just horrible. Um, was that a Gloucester? Because I think I've heard of that. They no, it was uh, Craig White. Okay. Who, uh, was yeah, White. It, it, maybe Gloucester picked it up as well. But yeah, it was that, and then we'd have a um, Warren Gatlin's retreats with driving malls. It was just, you know, it, it, that was that was your rest period apparently in between the <laughs> sets of the runways. So it was just, you know, and and we, to be fair, I still use runways with the sevens boys, you know, and it's very. Quite very simple, but you know, just five minutes down, up, down and up, back to the start, down and up, and then you're gone for 12 seconds. You got to get back. You got six reps of them, one one to one rest, and then there's ones with tackling in, all this sort of stuff. And then you end up doing about 18 reps, and then we have to do, you know, the retreats with gats, which is basically driving them all for three reps of driving yeah. malls, and then back to to the runways again for four sets. It's like <laughs> it was ridiculous, but we we, we still use it at Summers now because it still works, you know, and. It's, you know, it, it, the, the game's moved on, but it hasn't moved on in some parts, which is it. You still have to be quick off the floor. You still, you know, the energy you you, you use in contact and use from just getting hit in the floor is, you know, it's so much harder to, to do that than it is to run. Yeah. So, sort of, like, for instance, with the, with the US boys, <clears throat> we hardly do any running. The running's done in the rugby. Um, the rest of it's all collision fitness, yeah. down and ups and things like that, because you've got to be fit for that but like if we put the boys on a track and let them run all day it'd be easy yeah. you know no matter what running session we do but then you chuck a down and up in or a bit of collision and people fall apart and that's the fitness that we've got and you know like for instance we, we, did, we did a lot of collision fitness last year and some of the boys were completely yo-yo without any running and it just shows that um, you can train the body in a different way but we, we try and link everything to the game as I said we try and you know train a lot harder than uh, the game actually is 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess there's two things there. Is that you know they're already doing a lot of running from the rugby stuff. So you, yeah. you add running to that, then there's risk of overloading that you know that pathway. But then also Correct. that collision stuff. Yeah, it's so much hard. You know, so much more stressful on the the um, the cardiovascular system, like getting off the floor and you know flying into oh, the nervous system from the collisions. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then you got all the mental stuff and the. You got fear factors. You got anxiety. It's all that comes into it, you know. So we're really, really big on that, and it's quite. It's been interesting how that fitness has developed the team as a whole, yeah. you know. With, and like I said, with the you know the GPS emphasis on the sessions and how we plan that and do that, then like I said, they get they, they run without knowing. I think that's always key with players as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Get definitely. them to run without knowing. Yeah. And then they go, shit, I've done 4K at 30 percent of high speed. I'm like, yeah, well done. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Yeah, but if you ask them to do that as a session, you, you, you wouldn't get there. Yeah, that's no, good advice there. Uh, that's a question we ask all the guests on the podcast, uh, and it's what do you think is the biggest mistake rugby players make when it comes to strength and conditioning? Um, recovery. Uh, I think that's the one area that we, we, we do neglect a little bit, especially players. They think more is better, and I think you know, it's the quality. Um, some, of the, you know, some of the recovery strategies that players don't do, um, or think they, you know, it's all right. I don't need to do that. I don't need to take that. I don't need to sleep so much. I don't need, you know, I'll be all right. They think it's insignificant. I think it's the little details that make a big difference. And I think with the strength and condition, it's definitely, definitely that where you know, because the boys all want to do the the weights and the condition. They want to do all that, but it's the it's the it's the pain pain in the bum, you know, recovery strategies and that they struggle with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the biggest mistake is the recovery. Not 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 understanding that enough um, and, and buying into it I think that's one of the biggest ones yeah um, again another one we ask is um, what advice would you give to an upcoming strength coach go go out and learn as much as you want or, as you can off anyone I think that's a uh, for me when I was doing it that was I went with Craig right around the world to because to, luckily he was doing stuff with um, you know uh, World Rugby so he, he'd he give me stuff you know from all different teams around the world so just picking up anything and it might just you know affirm that you're on the right path it might give you something that's a gem that transforms what you're doing what well, just go and go and learn off, off as many people as you can go get experience go find the best people you know follow them um you know there's there's fergus Conley out there who's you know you can read everything he's done he's fantastic you know you're craig white you know you there's Calvin Morris, you know, this Dan Howells, who's the sevens boys here, he's, he's off to the NMLB. He's a fantastic SNC coach. He's done great for England, you know, all, all, all building the performance pathway there. So all these people, if you can get any knowledge off any of them, go and do it. You know, spend time being mental, spend time doing internships at the right places, you know, because I must admit, rugby's pretty saturated with internships where it's cheap labour, if you ask me, and they don't really learn. Get the right place. Go, go meet the people. Speak to people. Just go, go and learn as much as you can. And I think then, then find your own way and shape your own way. Yes. Um, but yeah, that'd be my biggest advice. Just go and learn. Go and see what's out there, and just learn off every sport and every person. Yeah, and I, th- I think like we, you said, you kind of, you, you see what people are doing, and then you, you know, take it and extract what works for you in your environment, and you kind of make your own thing. You know, there's an old saying: the best coaches are thieves, and you you take what you can, what oh, you think works, and no. then build your own program it's, around it. Re-engineering is called. It's not not stealing. Oh, I like that. It's re-engineering. I, like that. <laughs> I use that. Yeah. I re-engineer everything. Yeah. So it's like, but yes, mate, it's so true. And you know, the, the, and there's so much knowledge out there. So, and and that, you know, just take it, tweak it, add things to it. That that's you know, try and be creative and think of a, of a more efficient way or a better way or test, you know, just to make things better um, for you, for your style, for your you know, philosophy within within a team or a club or with an athlete. You know, that's right. Just go and you know, take those ideas and shape them. Yeah. No, definitely. And also, for, uh, <coughs> of the four names you mentioned, then we've had two on the podcast, so we're going all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, and... I guess, I guess kind of last question is you, you already mentioned the athlete factor and, we, and we've had Ryan on a podcast previously just tell us a bit more about that and how that's going yeah it's, it's, it's going well it's, um, so we built this purpose built training centre which my idea was to build you know if, if I had if I had a sports team or a centre you know what gym would I build and I was lucky enough to be able to design our own equipment 
build our own equipment. So we've built this training center up in Chester with a pitch next to it. And, um, you know, it, 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 we're trying to transform how and where people train. So give it, you know, the elite the elite expertise like Ryan Gibney, who's, who's a fantastic coach, you know, sharing his knowledge with, with Joe Public. You know, we the, the human body is the human body. So, you know, there's no gimmicks, there's no magic pill, but there is programming, there is knowledge, and there is a way to do it that, that works in elite sport. And it could be exactly the same for Joe Public. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, and with that, with the environment we've created, you know, we, we're lucky enough to, to attract professional teams as well. So it's... Um, we're getting there. We're getting there. So it's, it's nice. And, uh, you know, we're looking to grow uh, a few more sites as well, which is good. But, you know, the, the, the idea is just to, to share that not elite knowledge of, uh, of sport with everyone from the beginner to, to the absolute you know, elite athletes. So, we, you know, we've got members at our place where you've got, um, you know, one member, you know, she's a very, very... Um, heavy lady so to speak and she's got a lot of medical conditions no other gym would touch her but we because we're hands on and we got the expertise we took her on and you know she broke down in tears and we've got her she's fantastic um, and doing really really well um, uh, to you know Gareth Evans who won the gold uh, for powerlifting for uh, the Commonwealth Games you know so that, that's the range of the range of people we attract and like I said we just want to share our knowledge with everyone really and that's that's key we we're, we're a very hands-on gym, you know. Everyone gets our app, everyone gets a program, um, everyone gets a coach assigned to them and, and, and looked after and monitored. Our, our apps linked to Fitbit and My Fitness Pal and things like that. So every member gets the elite treatment in a way, um, in, in a world-class environment, and that's sort of our philosophy. And that was the idea that I started. And uh, yeah, we built it now, so now it's uh, yeah, we're up and running. So that's good. Yeah, it's nice. I- and I can attest to that. So it's an amazing facility. I went even before you'd you'd open it. It was finished, and I was I was blown away by the you know the all oh, the kit you got in there, and that was even before the cryo chamber was there and everything. So um, yeah, and and it's nice like you say to have for for the Joe public to be able to rub shoulders with those good athletes. You know, it must be massive for them in terms of motivation and 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 even just getting the training knowledge. So um, yeah, it's a it's a definitely a good thing to be a part of, and uh, I'm sure it'll go well. And hopefully, I'll pop up and visit you again soon. Oh, mate, definitely always welcome. Always welcome. Cool. Lastly, Phil, um, where can people learn more about yourself? Um, just on our website, it's www, um, www.afchester.global. Uh, um, so, yeah, just on our website, that's more yeah. about us. Um, and, you know, I'm on that. And, uh, yeah, just get in touch through, through the website if, if we can help with anything. Yeah, cool. And, of course, we'll share the, the link to the website on the show notes. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, thanks for taking the time to speak to us while you're over in Paris and, and all the best uh, over there with everything and, and the rest of the season. Thank you very much, mate. Speak soon. Cheers, Paul. So there you go, the insights of a rugby coach in terms of SNC. Obviously, he's got a big passion for SNC. Um, and I guess if you're an SNC coach, he, he kind of understand where you're coming from with his background. And obviously now working at the Athlete Factory. So thanks, Phil, for taking the time to talk to us and all the best with the USA 7s and the Athlete Factory. Guys, if you're up in Chester, check it out. It's an amazing facility um, and definitely one you'd want to train at. Uh, in the meantime, guys, more pod- podcasts on the way. Please subscribe to us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn or iTunes and give us a five-star review. And of course, if you want to improve your rugby performance, please check out rugbyrenegade.com and our online subscription program and stay tuned for more podcasts thanks for listening to the rugby renegade podcast for more quality rugby strength and conditioning information check us out at rugbyrenegade.com rugby renegade building machines